All right, Shalom. I just wanted to um, just speak about for a few minutes because it's um, it's turning 2024 in just a little bit here. So um, I figured it'd be appropriate to go on a little bit of a rant or whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, first thing is first. I was looking on, um, you know, on some of these meme channels, man. You know, and it's laughable. I remember from last year, you know, they had memes up. Where it said, you know, it's turning 2023. And the guy was like, oh shit, you know, here we go again. And the, the joke is, you know, basically from like 2020 to where we are now. You know, every year it's always started out with, you know, some type of disaster to make it worse than, you know, the prior year before. You know, and it's like shit. You know, that's how it's been, you know, since 2020. You know, of course, the whole Corolla thing, you know, happened in 2020. Then the next year, the um, the capital of the United States got invaded by the American citizens. Right, the Capitol riot, or what was it, January 6th. And then, of course, 2022, uh, Russia invaded Ukraine, and that's still going on. Two years just about now, and next month. Um... You know, so shit, who, who the hell knows what's going to happen this um, 2024. And I can't forget that 2023 started out with an event as well, right? It happened over in uh, in Turkey, right? There was an earthquake that killed like 50,000 people over there. I mean, <laughs> I mean, shit, you know, Turkey, if you look over there right now and, you know, and see that country, you know, it's still devastation over there, man. You know, countless lives forever ruined. You know, thousands of homes ruined. Like, I was looking the other day on the, on the news, and there was a, um, you know, another earthquake that just happened over in China, which, you know, I didn't get to catch everything because it was just when it, you know, first happened, so... You know, they don't know the whole death tool. You know, they don't know how many people lost their lives in it. But they said that, you know, 100,000 plus buildings were severely damaged by the earthquake. You know, so you can imagine there must have been a few thousand casualties as well from this event, at least. You know, so, so again, you know, all over the world, there's you know, a bunch of shit that's going on right now, you know, there's a bunch of shit that's going on, you know, so shit, who the hell knows what's going to happen this coming year, and we can't forget either that, um, that 2024 is a election year as well, you know, so that's going to be interesting how that, um, you know, how that turns out, you know, that's going to be interesting, and, um, you know, the whole situation going on over in Ukraine right now, as I said, next month, uh, in February, that'll be two years since that whole situation begun. And truly, you know, if you remember back to the beginning, you know, couple of months of that situation, you know, the, um, the attitude that people had towards it right over here in the West is, well, they're going to win, right? Ukraine's going to win, you know, in America, and NATO's going to back them up uh, until they win. But now NATO's saying, well, you know, uh, you know, we might have to come to some type of agreement where they can keep some other land and uh, in exchange for, you know, stopping the invasion, you know, from going further on into the country. And then America's sitting there where last year they were like, you know, Biden was like, you know, well, we're going to defend Ukraine with everything we got, you know, from now until the end of this invasion. But now they're saying, you know, well, you know, our funding for all these weapons, you know, that we're able to send you, it's starting to, um, you know, dwindle down. You know, and truly, you know, let's just live in reality for a couple of minutes. The truth is that Ukraine cannot win the the war over there they cannot win first of all russia has way more people living in that country compared to the amount of people living in ukraine right so russia has basically like an endless amount of um 
you know, bodies that they can throw at this fight. Meanwhile, in Ukraine, they basically have, you know, they went through all that they have in reserve, right? They had to, you know, bring up people. I mean, shit, you had people from other countries flying over there to help aid the Ukrainian army back when the, the battle first begun. I remember that where you had all these news stories come in, where you had people from, say, Poland, people from America, people from Finland, people from... Uh, I mean, shit, the, the number of countries could go on and on. You know, you had people volunteering to go join the uh, army over there to help defend their country. You know, so here we are two years later, and, uh, you know, the truth of the matter is, is there's really not many more people they can, you know, call up. You know, because half of the the country, it, you either have people that are, you know, trying to flee the country so they don't have to, you know, be called up to go fight. I mean, shit, the same thing's going on in Russia, too, where you got people over there, you know. Um, like, I remember <laughs> there was a story that came out where there was these two dudes that, wanted to flee the country, so what they done is they, they swum across the, uh, I should say swim, they swam across the, uh, the water there to, um, I forget what country they washed up at, but, um, they basically risked their lives to swim, you know, across the water to, you know, whatever other country they landed in just so they could escape, you know, being called up, which props to those guys. You know, it's, um, you know, the truth is that a, a real person, right, a real person that stands for what's right, they would refuse to go fight any war for the politicians, right? They, they would refuse to be called up and go to do that. That's the real hero right there, right? The real heroes are not the people that say, okay, well, government, you know, tells me I got to go do it, so I'm going to go do it. Because, well, they tell me to. Those are not the heroes, right? So the people who die in these wars, they're not heroes. They're just people who believed what they were told, and then they went to fight the politicians' wars and ended up dying in the process. So those are not heroes, right? Those are people who were just ignorant and believed in the God called government. But that's a video for another time, right? But the real hero is the man who says, you know what, I'm not going to go fight your war. I'm not going to go do it. I am not going to listen to what you tell me. I'm not going to defend this country. That Those are the real heroes. And, and guess what? Those men have my respect. Right? The people who tried to flee the country so they didn't have to go die in a war. Those men have my respect. You know, those are the real heroes of this whole situation. The people on both sides, both on the Ukrainian side and on the Russian side, who said, you know what, I'm not going to go fight for Putin, I'm not going to go fight for Zelensky, I'm going to flee the country so I don't have to go do it. Those are the real heroes of this war. And those are the men who have my respect. You know, and I can't say the same for the, the gullible people who just, you know, decided to go fight because the government told them they had to. You know, those people are just... um. You know, it's funny to me because, you know, they'll be sitting there saying, well, you know, government is for the people and by the people, right? They love their governments. But here it is. It's like, well, wait, they don't care about you. They're literally throwing you to the, to the front to fight in this battle. Like, I don't, you know, we can't forget about this. If you look back when this whole situation began, there was videos that were coming up online of soldiers in the Russian army. Um, and they were showing that the, you know, this is funny. The helmets that some of them got, they literally could, um, like, break them with their own hands, right? Or you had a video out there where the, the army, you know, captured some equipment that was left over after they killed some of the troops. And they, this one soldier, he was able to basically break the helmet of the Russian soldiers by just, like, hitting it a few times and the thing totally caved in. So it's like, shit, if he can do that with his fist, that shit ain't gonna, you know, stop anything. 
So they're just throwing, you know, shit from China, right? There's a, you know, a joke going around saying the supplier of, um, you know, Russia's body armor is Wish, right? Wish.com. If anybody that knows what that is, right? It's, you can basically, which I've used that website multiple times, but most of the shit on there is just from China, right? It's made for, you know, extremely cheap materials, most of that stuff, and then sold over here in the United States. Or really, I believe it's probably around the world, too. But, um, but yeah, that was the going joke, right? That wishes the place that, you know, funds their, uh, their armory and stuff like that for, you know, vet, uh, what's it called? Um, chest plates, you know, helmets, shit like that. You know, and, and another video came up, that's which I saw, and literally these guys got a, um, a paintball, um, chest plate, right? They got like a chest plate that's supposed to be used when you play paintball, right? They got handed that from their superior officers. It's like, wait, what? That's ridiculous, you know, but this is what's going on over there. You know, but anyway, I don't want to make the video too long, but, um, you know, I just had to speak for a few minutes, you know, about, you know, the new year here. So, um, you know, nobody knows what to expect at this point, man. You know, nobody knows what the hell is going to happen tomorrow. Nobody knows what the hell is going to happen, you know, next week. You know, you just got to basically take, you know, every day as it comes. You know, you got to take one day at a time, it seems, at this point. But, uh, but anyway, you know, I'm not going to make the video too drawn out. But um, anyway, I'm going to say shalom.